Yeah. He even said I'm smoking on a Pookie pack. He said I'm smoking on that Pookie low night. Like he did. He, he needed to be in the ground. I put his ass where he supposed to be. He tried. Me. In the vibrant streets of Atlanta, where dreams clash and ambitions collide, one man's journey stood out in the chaos. This is the gripping tale of Gucci Mane, a rapper who faced a murder charge head on and walked away victorious. It's not every day you see black rappers beating murder charges, especially with the level of profiling they suffer. Gucci has had a fair share of troubles, but this is not just a story of his legal battles. It was a fight for survival in a world where fame and fortune often come at a cost. But how did Gucci Mane manage to get the case thrown out of court even if the body of the victim was found? Let's get into it. One of them had green tape. Um, one of them had a weapon. One of them had brass knuckles and hit him with brass knuckles. Uh, didn't hit him real hard, had him wrapped up. Another guy had a weapon, hit one of the other guys. How it all started. Gucci Mane was still a young rapper in 2005, trying to make himself a household name when he collaborated with Young Jeezy, an Atlanta-based rapper. Young Jeezy had a record label called CTE, which stands for Corporate Thugs Entertainment. And when he had the opportunity to work with Gucci Mane on a song they called Icy, he didn't pass it up. After the song came out, it was a classic club banger. But with the success of the song came a world of problems, including a dead body half buried in the woods near a school. At the time, Gucci Mane was planning to release an album called Trap House, and he wanted to put Icy on it. But Jeezy also had plans to release his own album called Let's Get It, Thug Motivation 101, and also wanted the song on the album. It was definitely an icy situation because none of the rappers wanted to back down. And Gucci Mane said to hell with everything and put the song on his album. So when Gucci Mane decided to use Icy on the album first, Jeezy was left high and dry. While some artists might just grumble and move on, Jeezy's reaction was short of explosive. I really don't like to be compared to that nigga, man, because like, I'm like a VHS homie. You can rewind me back. Everybody in the city know me, dog. He retaliated with a bold move that would send shockwaves through the industry. The Bounty After Gucci and Young Jeezy released Icy, Gucci Mane had a custom chain made for the song and wore it around quite often. Jeezy decided it was time for him to wear the necklace, and at the end of his diss track, Stay Strapped, he said, So if he come to your town, you just happen to snatch that off his neck or knock that off his neck. When I come to your town, shoot it to me. I'ma shoot you 10 stacks, man, so I can cremate that mother. Jeezy promised to give anyone who could get him the necklace from Gucci Mane's neck $10,000. 10 stacks is kind of a big deal now, but imagine how much it was back in 2005. Anyone would have jumped at the opportunity, and trust me, people did. The Setup After Jeezy made his request known, Gucci Mane responded with a song called Round One. To keep things short, Gucci Mane was declaring war and letting Jeezy know that he was ready for anything. In essence, he was taking Jeezy's advice to stay strapped because things were about to get serious. Despite the looming threat of his life, Gucci Mane refused to let fear dictate his actions. During a night out at the strip club, he found himself drawn to a particular dancer and made the spontaneous decision to take her home. Gucci didn't realize at the time, but this stripper had her own agenda and was using Gucci to get close to him and set him up. Gucci took the woman home for some action, and things went south quickly. When a group of thugs showed up after the stripper, they came armed and were ready to end his life. They started firing shots, and luckily for Gucci Mane, he had a registered firearm, which he used to shoot and hit one of the assailants. The other men ran out of the house afterwards. Different accounts of the story started to come to light. You feel like it was a setup because cats came like after you, like they was coming to get you. Yeah, I think it was a setup. Yeah. Different narratives. A week after the shooting happened, police found a body buried in the woods close to a Colombian middle school in the area. Some students of the school claimed to have seen the body half buried on their way to school on May 19, 2005. Some days after, the body identified as Henry Lee Clark III, also known as Pookie Loke. Gucci Mane turned himself in, and he was arrested on charges of murder. With Gucci turning himself in, people claimed he buried the body after Pookie's associates left him in the house. Others said Pookie ran with his associates, but instead of getting into their escape truck, he ran into the woods and died there. But then there would be no explanation for his body being found half buried. No matter how the issue went down, things were looking pretty rough for Gucci, who was now stuck with a murder charge for acting in self-defense. And the story only gets weirder. He should be celebrating the release of his album and the success of his single, Icy. He's had to defend his life 
last week. And when Pookie Loke was identified, they found out that he was an associate of Jeezy and signed to the CTE record label. Could it be that it was Jeezy that sent Pookie after Gucci as revenge for putting Icy on his album? Or was Pookie so interested in the 10 stacks that he was willing to risk his life and freedom? Gucci was still in jail as the case was being investigated, and he leaked a phone call out which said, I just want to let everyone know I'm not a murderer. I was upset. I was scared a little bit, but I had to do what I had to do. You know, if somebody comes to you try to kill you, yeah. you know, and self-defense, self-defense. Mm -hmm. So somebody's trick to try to kill you, which, you know, you gotta do what you gotta, you gotta do. do, you gotta do yeah. Absolutely. You gotta be a man about it. I'm not a bad person. I have remorse for everything that happened. Gucci Mane was trying to let the world know that the situation was out of his control, which was kind of making people start to wonder if this was all a part of Jeezy's mastermind plan. With his name being thrown around in the case, Jeezy denied his involvement in the murder and claimed that Gucci Mane was trying to spin the situation and make good publicity out of a bad situation to sell records. Jeezy hadn't been officially accused yet, but he was already telling narratives about Gucci Mane and the case, which kind of made him suspicious, even if he was never investigated. I just like a detective, learn, you know, so look at the motive, who has motive to do it, mm. and this the only nigga has motive. Mm. Jeezy, yeah. The acquittal. Finally, in January 2006, Gucci Mane was ruled not guilty in the case after claiming that he only shot as an act of self-defense. The ruling was mostly based on the fact that there was no evidence to prove someone actually raided the house. Plus, even if there had been evidence, Gucci's ability to defend himself effectively against any potential intruder was clear. There were no eyewitnesses to corroborate Gucci Mane's account, except for a lone individual trimming hedges nearby. However, this witness's testimony was swiftly deemed irrelevant. Well, I seen uh, Snoop reposted it, mm -hmm. and I think he got it from my, my fan page. After being unearthed by the rapper's legal team, for Gucci, the focus was pressing forward, undeterred by the shadows of the past. The Aftermath After the unfortunate incident, Gucci Mane claimed to have been suffering post-traumatic stress disorder because it's not an easy thing to see a man die, and he wasn't wrong. Even soldiers in war that are trained to kill suffer PTSD as a result of doing their job, so Gucci Mane was definitely having a hard time. But that's not to stop him from dissing Jeezy in his song 745, which he released in 2006. He took direct shots at Jeezy with the line, Do I smell p Nah, that's Jeezy. You ain't no snowman, you're more like a snowflake, cupcake, cornflake. Nigga, you too fake. Then he took more shots at Jeezy in 2008 by working with DJ Drama, who worked on a lot of projects with Jeezy. Jeezy wasn't happy with the new development and made his crew jump DJ Drama at an event. Whatever situations they have, truth be told, it's, it's really not any of my business, but I just know that it's deeper than rap a lot of times, and you know, I think about all the other people. Gucci Mane and Young Jeezy decided to squash their beef in 2009 after their entourage got into a fight and bullets went flying. They decided that it was a bad idea for them to work together as innocent people could get hurt. Although they attempted to squash their beef, it didn't stop either of them from sneaking disses into their tracks. In a twist of fate, they faced off in a versus battle in 2020, with Jeezy ultimately claiming victory. While Jeezy may have taken the crown in the rap arena, Gucci Mane's triumph in the courtroom stands as his ultimate victory. Smoking on Pookie Load tonight. I tell you what. And the shit we came from in the street, dog, you seen that we've been through it, dog. 20 years. 20 years. And when I said I wanted to do this shit for the culture, that's what I wanted to do, nigga. I brought you here to show you the world, care about what the f we got going on, because we are the culture. You feel me? Me and you. Where we came from. What we been through, nigga. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to let us know in the comments if you want to see more content like this or if you want something else. If you did like it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, we will see you in the next one.